succeed for you guys, and I feel like that certainly signals that the committee is still going to stick with that trend of rewarding people who have tough schedules. Just, do you feel like that's kind of the case here, and do you think it's important for the committee to continue to reward people who go out and schedule tough? You know, I think the committee looks at a lot of different things. They do look and value your schedule, um, uh, your strength of schedule and your level of competition. I think they, I think they use the eye test and evaluate how teams are playing. I think obviously they look at records. Um, you know, they're they're looking at injuries. They're they're looking at a lot of different things. Um, and uh, you know, obviously our we have several positives in those categories. What was your initial reaction when you saw you were sixteen Green Bay with the opponent? Um, usually pretty familiar with Green Bay. I've watched them quite a bit throughout the years. This year, however, had not seen them. So um, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with their program. Always been um, kind of an admirer of their program. Um, I think they, they play tough and they're efficient. And uh, when, when I was able to really dig in and, and dive into them this particular year, there's no exception. They're, they're very efficient. They're very intelligent gritty, tough, um, team, team you enjoy watching play. What is it like for you to go back to an area you're familiar with? Yeah, um, honestly, haven't been back to Raleigh a whole lot. Um, and, uh, you know, li lived there for a few years. So it, it, it'll be interesting to, to go back and just see everything. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that I'm kind of excited about is Tamari getting to, to be near home. And, um, she just lives a few minutes from that campus. How fun is that homecoming for Tamari? Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm excited. I know that um, her, her family in particular has wanted us to be able to play over there um, each year. So um, I, I know she's excited and, and a really great opportunity for Tamari. I saw the team's reaction to their seating yesterday, but as a coach, how cool is it to watch them be so excited about a six seed? Yeah, you know, I think they're, they're just excited to play. You know, uh, at this point, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, lead up and to the tournament and, and what your seed is going to be. But at this point, it's all about your matchups. It really is. And so, you know, they're excited. They get to see, see themselves on television and, and hear their name called. And uh, it's an exciting time of year. And, and really, you should never take it for granted. I understand the expectations here, but... Um, you know, you really shouldn't take it for granted. When you look at that celebration, there was a montage or a collage where they zoomed in on the team celebrating, then you see Jackson in the background <laughs> just clapping his heart away. How fun is that to see how involved and excited he is for the team as well? Yeah, Jackson's pretty um, in, ingrained in our program, and, and he knows more about what's going on than I usually give him credit for, so he was in there. He knew how to also get on television. He, he understands how to put himself in position to be on television. But, yeah, he's, he's excited, and he's the ultimate optimist. So he's, he's a fan right now. NC State was a school y'all played in a closed-door scrimmage before the year. feels like forever ago, but do you take anything from that experience going into a possible matchup? Uh, I, you know, we, we did have a closed scrimmage with them. Uh, it was so long ago. The teams are both completely different. Uh, Tamari was barely playing at that time. Jewel did not participate due to an ankle injury during that time. So we looked very different. Destiny Wells was playing a lot of minutes, so uh, we're a very different team um, than, than when we played them. Speaking of matchups, Green Bay is definitely more of a guard-led team. You guys have a lot of size on them. Is there a, a challenge when you have such a size advantage on team to not maybe like overestimate that going into the matchup and you know how that things will play out? I think when, when you look at a, a team like Green Bay, you, you have um, yeah, you look at advantages, but you look at disadvantages as well. And so I think for us, we have to try to maximize maybe where we have opportunities, but then try to take care of the areas that maybe is in their favor uh, because they can spread you out. They do a great job. Their, their offensive efficiency is one of the best in the country. And, it, and it's, I don't, I, I don't want to undersell that because they under, they're not playing South Carolina every night, but they're still doing it, and they're doing it with um, uh, as good as anybody in the country. How do you balance wanting to use that size advantage on offense, but then also knowing they will spread you out on defense? Yeah, I think we have to go in the game with a great game plan on the defensive end. Um, a, solid game plan on the offensive end. I, I think one of, when you look at Green Bay, I, I obviously am talking about their offensive efficiency, but historically they are known for being tough 
defensively, uh, stingy on the defensive end. So they're not just playing on one side of the court. So we're going to have to have a great game plan on both ends um, so that we can maximize our opportunities. With that offensive efficiency, how is how important is it to have some good defensive performances going in that one against Alabama comes to mind, for example? Yeah, you, you know, I think our team has trended well defensively. Um, this Green Bay team is going to look very different than anybody we played in the last month, I would think. Um, they, they're they're going to give us a different look. And so for us, we have to be able to handle the game plan. We have to be able to uh, get outside ourselves and maybe do some different things defensively. How eager is this team to get back on the court for March Madness this year? Yeah, you know, I think um, sometimes the, the downtime between the conference tournament and the selection show is hard. You don't know who your opponent is. You're, you're practicing without an end goal, so to speak. Um, I'm excited to get them on the court today because now, now we know a, we have a plan. Now we know um, we have a goal, we have a destination, um, we have something now that's more tangible. Uh, they, they were really good in practice yesterday. I thought they had great energy. Uh, they were very vocal, uh, a happy group, happy group. So I'm hopeful that we'll see that same energy today, but a lot of focus um, towards our opponent. Your team has had a week to kind of recover from a really just emotional loss in the SEC tournament. Just how have you seen them kind of maybe reset and, and respond? And have you seen that maybe add another layer of motivation going into this week? Yeah, you know, I think it was very difficult. And the way the way that, you know, spring break and the schedules fell, we went right into a break. And uh, I think it, what the, the negative, we weren't together to be able to, you know, get through it together. The positive, I think they were able to reset. I really think they were able to um, get away, take their minds off of uh, that game, try to each person find a way to move forward. Um, and I, I think, you know, we still communicated through that time, but they, they came back in a pretty good, pretty good spirit. So I think they all, you know, we still talk about it a little bit, but I think they're in a good space. Um, you know, I, I don't know uh, where the advantage disadvantage is in terms of the travel. Uh, we'll be on a bus, so it'll be a long bus ride for us. Um, you know, some teams are very accustomed to that and used to that. Um, but uh, you know, you're not changing your time zones, so that's that's probably a little bit more of an advantage. This morning was the window for immediate eligibility for the transfer portal. You know, just where the challenge of that is the coaching staff to kind of balance that, you know, move really quick portal recruiting and also preparing for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, obviously right now our our focus has to be on our current basketball team and what we need to be doing. Um, however, you have to be on top of things, and so we're monitoring the portal um, starting this morning. And, you know, we'll, we'll make sure that um, we're doing our job in every area. Um, so we're, we're tracking on it, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> what is your relationship like with NC State head coach Wes Moran? coach together and then how nice is it to go to a region where you're familiar with the host as head coach yeah um well Wes is a great guy um he's one of our our dear friends uh, John goes on vacation with him every year so we're we're very close with him and um you know we actually talked last week and um made the comment that it was definitely a possibility that um that our seeds could line up that we could be at the same site um, so, you know, I, I know we'll be treated well when we go over there. I do know that for a fact. Have you faced him as a head coach before um, mm -hmm. since you left his staff? You know, is it kind of fun to do that, to, to you know, square with somebody you're so familiar with? Yeah, um, sometimes it's fun. Um, but, when you know, it's somebody that you pull for, so sometimes it's tough as well. But uh, when I left Chattanooga, I went to Western Carolina and was there for five years, and so we played Chattanooga at least twice every year. Um, so we've played, we've played against each other several times.